this Samsung TV, it has certainly seen in better days. And it's a new one too. Got this Samsung 32 inch TV in. Let's see what's wrong with this one. Oh, Houston, we have a problem. So this is what happens when you launch things like batteries at your TV. You break the screen. This one is beyond repair. So we're gonna gut the boards out of this one and I'll, I'll gut the LEDs. I'll gut everything out of this thing and scrap the rest of it. So this is this is not a repair video. This one here is just going to be to uh, gut what we can out of the set because this one here is shot. So this is what we're down to on the modern television. We're down to one board. One board that does everything. Get your power supply, video processor, everything on one board except for your timing controller which is on a separate little board right down here that's connected directly to the screen. So as far as salvage goes, basically one board, grab the speakers while I'm at it. Grab the speakers, grab the uh, the main board and uh, maybe we'll pull the panel apart and take the lights out of it and then scrap the rest of it because uh, it's not worth anything. I mean it's not that I'll probably ever have a need even for this board. There's not even any parts on here that I can probably steal. Look at the MOSFETs have gone to a uh, surface mounted design for the MOSFET surface mounted components. That's the we have the Wi-Fi board. Now these things have gotten so cheap and so disposable. There's the lights. That's for the back lights. So basically the board from this thing, I'll make this thing available, maybe put it up on eBay or something and sell it to someone who might need one because I doubt that I'm ever going to see a need for the board for this. I think this TCOM board is actually part of the, of the glass too on this one. Make sure that the capacitor is discharged. That's it. <laughs> That's a television on a board. Everything. Power supply. Everything. Main board. If any of you guys need one of these main boards, I got one. There's a the number of it. If anybody needs one of those boards, you know where there is one. I'll have it for a while, I'm sure. Now you see what I mean about the TCON board? Used to be you could replace the TCOM board, but now it's all part of the panel. One connector that connects to the, the board itself, to the panel, and you can't unplug it. It's permanently attached. That's part of the main panel. We'll put we'll pull the panel out on this thing. So I'll take the panel apart on this set, I'm gonna flip it over. We're going to release all the tabs. It should just pop out. If I take out the... Uh, it's interesting because this is actually the metal back. This is this whole piece that's painted black is not a back. This is actually the screen itself. That's part of the reflector. The lights will be attached to the back side of this. Made in China. What else is new? Like if this TV was brand new. It still had the plastic on it. Look at that, hey? Look at that, I can I can new bezel on this thing. We'll see how these sets are put together that are not repairable.
they're just held with tabs across the top here to hold them together. But if you're going to separate one of these things, be careful because this bezel does break, break relatively easy as I just found out. Gone are the days where you could open up the bezel and remove the screen easily. Once the bezel is off, the screen should lift off the sink, which it does. I have a pit bull that just wandered into my workshop. A dog just wandered into my workshop. Never a dog catcher around when you want one. That would be my next door neighbor's dog, by the way. The one that we hear howling quite often when they lock him outside and um, go out for the day. And the dog doesn't like to be left outside. So it sits there howling all day long. Today he comes over and left a big deposit on my front lawn. Wonderful. I wonder how much power this thing takes to fire it up. Bunch of catches around the side of it. I just want to see what type of lights, how many, how many lamps are in this one. And we'll, we'll, we'll rescue the LEDs before I dispose of the rest of this. Let's see how cheap the diffusers have gotten on them now. They used to have a couple of sheets of plastic, now they're down to two. And oh, there's not even that many lights in this one. The lights are all connected in series, so if I take out one of the strips of lights and give it uh, 30 volts, we'll see that the other ones light up just fine. And they light up right from about 24 all the way up to 30 volts. thing with these lights is they're kind of blue. They're not a nice, uh, they're not a nice like white light, they're almost a bluish light. But I can still utilize these strips, run them in parallel and uh, have some nice, you know, nice white bright strip lights out of this. Or 15 volts, there's five of them. So it'd be 45 volts. Yeah, they actually need 17.5 volts to get them to full brightness because each each LED is going to be three and a half volts or somewhere in there. So 17 or so volts. If I turn the voltage down 12, you can see that at 12 volts, they barely light. So uh, I'd have to, uh, if I was going to utilize these in any type of a lamp, I'd have to come up with a 17 volt supply to drive these things to their proper potential so that uh, they could be usable. What I think I'll end up doing on these is I'm just gonna pull these lights out and uh, I'll just put them put them away with everything else. I don't really have a use for them right now, but they are very brilliant. And with the, uh, if I took the lens off here, right now they've got these lenses on them that, that fire the light out to the side. If I took the lenses off, they become directional like a regular LED and give off some nice light. Although as I say, it is very cold. The color of this is very blue and not really appealing because it is almost a violet colored light. Anyway, to take the lights out, they're just kind of glued in place here. I said they put some hot glue on here. Looks like that's what they've got them bonded with. Now they just bonded these things down with some spots of hot glue so they come out pretty easy. Hot glue and tape. I'll keep out of this thing, anything that I could use. So say the LEDs might come in handy for a future project. So I will keep them. I'll put the rest of this crap back together. Sort of throw the screen on there, button it up, and ship it off to the recycler. If you look on the screen here, you'll see these are tabs. These are the ICs that, oops, I just broke that one. Drive the, uh, the panel. They're actually right on the, the actual glass itself. These tabs are part of the actual panel. They do fail sometimes and then you get lines in the screen. But there are tabs on the on the side, on one side of it. These ones here, these tabs are the ones that drive the lines across this way. And then the tabs on the bottom here um, 
There's one big one right down here in this flex cable that connects between this interface timing controller board. There's the back of the IC there. It just comes off like that. That breaks off like that and there's the drive IC there. It's actually part of this material and you can remove it. You can't replace it, but you can remove it. Yeah, that's uh, that's the way that they're designed today. They're silicon. That's the way these things are designed today. They are not repairable. Everything's all on the screen itself and in one board. When they break, you toss them out and you buy a new one. You can, if you look closely here, you can probably see the electrodes that run along the back side of the screen there. That's it. Thanks for watching. Catch you later.